Pain medication and management are a fundamental part of patient care. I'm going to use the World Health Organization Ladder of Analgesia as a structure for this video. The original ladder was designed for cancer patients and involved three steps on the ladder and was applicable to non-cancer, acute and chronic pain. Recently though, suggestions were made to modify it and a four-step ladder was introduced. The idea is to start at the bottom of the ladder and work your way up the ladder based on the patient's pain intensity. And if the patient experiences toxicity or severe adverse effects, then you either reduce the dosage or move down the ladder. Note that this doesn't always mean that you start from the bottom. It should be tailored to the intensity and consider other factors such as contraindications. In some cases, such as fractures, you may start at the top and work down. At the bottom, we have the non-opioid medications. Examples include NSAIDs like ibuprofen and naproxen and paracetamol or acetaminophen in the US. Adjuvants are drugs we give alongside the specific analgesics. These are things such as antidepressants like amitriptyline, anticonvulsant medications like gabapentin and pregabalin, anxiolytics like diazepam, or even corticosteroids like dexamethasone. These can be present at any step of the ladder. Side effects of NSAIDs include gastric ulcers, so you may prescribe them alongside a proton pump inhibitor, an increased risk of bleeding, as well as a reduction of renal blood flow. Contraindications, therefore, are people with chronic kidney disease, cirrhosis, heart failure, and bear in mind that they may exacerbate asthma. Paracetamol is contraindicated in patients with liver damage and in severely undernourished patients. The next step up on the ladder is introduction of a weak opioid. The main examples are codeine and tramadol. Often, these are combined with analgesics earlier in the ladder. For example, cocodamol is a combination of codeine and paracetamol. It's important here to remember how much patients can have. For example, typically, patients can have one gram of paracetamol every four hours, up to a maximum of four grams in 24 hours. So if a patient is given cocodamol, typically in tablets of 30 mg codeine and 500 mg of paracetamol, you need to make sure that they're not going over the safe limits of paracetamol. As well as other opioid side effects, codeine more commonly causes constipation, while tramadol more commonly produces agitation. Now in step 3, this is the largest difference between the older ladder and the modified one. These are non-pharmacological interventions and they are emphasised here. Integrative therapies like acupuncture, massage and yoga can be considered at any step, but if you've exhausted non-opioids, weak opioids and integrative therapies are not working, then minimally invasive interventional therapies may be considered. These are things like nerve blocking, radiofrequency and disc decompression. I know this sounds a lot more hassle than stepping up to a strong opioid, but the authors highlight the opioid crisis and this is why these methods are recommended. Remember also that the modified ladder is talking most specifically about chronic non-cancer pain, and so of course for cancer pain and acute pain, these methods may not be considered. The top of the ladder is where the strong opioids come in, mainly morphine variants. Drugs include morphine sulfate, which is the drug in Oromorph, IV morphine, oxycodone and fentanyl patches are other examples. Fentanyl patches in particular are very useful in renal impairment. We may have what's known as breakthrough pain, which is where patients experience pain beyond the usual and for these episodes, patients are usually prescribed one sixth of their total opioid dose on an as required basis. In terms of side effects, opioids often lead to constipation because the mu opioid receptor is highly expressed in the GI tract and agonists like opioids then lead to a higher tone and decreased motility. This is why laxatives are often prescribed alongside opioids, in particular the stimulant laxatives such as Senna. Opioids also often cause nausea and so antiemetics are prescribed too. Examples are metoclopramide cyclizine and a dancedron. Other side effects include sedation, 
respiratory depression, drowsiness, meiosis, as well as tolerance, where over time a higher dose may need to be given for the same analgesic effect. And linked to that, we of course have addiction and withdrawal. Also remember that the antidote to opioids is naloxone. In order to get an idea of the pain experienced by the patient, you can use the Socrates mnemonic, especially things like the character and severity of the pain. However, remember that you always need to do an A to E assessment to rule out an acutely unwell patient. Generally, if a patient is not responding to strong analgesia, then it's likely that there is something else going on.